Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So with my friends at Yarnspirations.com. We have the Timeless Tunisian Blanket. It is a stitch along. This is the introductory video for it. We are going to be using a seven millimeter size uh, afghan hook and this is all that you need. You don't need a Tunisian hook here or an afghan hook with the cord. Everything will fit here because everything here is done in panels. So you see all these different little panels. They're all done individually which makes this actually a very portable project in order for you to take. What we did realize during the prototype that we did is that we think that uh, a seven millimeter is a better than a G6 or four and a half millimeter. In Tunisian what is not written is that Tunisian can be very tight and so we want to increase our hook size bigger than the yarn ball recommendation for the type of yarn that it is. So we decided to go with the seven millimeter. You can decide which way you want to go. Stick with the pattern or take our recommendation of a seven millimeter just like you see. These hooks are kind of hard to find. I usually have to order them online. They're called a Tunisian hook or an Afghan hook and usually these are what they look like. So um, sometimes you can get the hook that's on opposite side which is not a problem but these are kind of what you want. So we're going to begin today with the beginning uh, uh, learning how to do Tunisian from scratch. I'm just going to do a little swatch with you for you to try and you can determine whether this is of interest to you. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. When we have different size hooks we have like a regular hook just like this and then we have an afghan hook that is a lot longer clearly. And so what I find with myself in order for my hand not to get tired is that I like to hold my Tunisian hook so at the balance point. So it doesn't want to fall back and it doesn't want to fall forward and I'm always trying to find that balance in order to make myself uh, use this a lot easier. And the muscle correction is in the balance of the hook. So once there's a project on here the balance point can change and so then you'll change the position of that. And so I like to hold my hook just like I would if I was doing regular uh, crochet. I don't know if I've seen anybody do Tunisian this way but I'm not saying it's not possible and that's where we're going to begin. So I'm going to demonstrate if you want to grab some yarn with me and we're going to demonstrate um, how to do Tunisian just from the basics and teaching you the simple stitch. So let's begin by creating a slip knot. You can let me know in the comments if Tunisian is brand new for you. I'd like to hear your point of view. And so what I want to do is that I want to chain a total 10. You're going to operate this like it's a regular crochet hook. So you're just going to yarn over and pull through. And we're going to do this 10 times. So I'll go slow. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So if you're not there, just put me on pause and then we're going to start row number one and we're going to talk about the forward pass and the return pass. Whenever the hook is moving in a forward direction like this, so see this is the point. So think about this as a boat and here's the front of the hull of your boat and when it's traveling this way it is traveling forward. It's, it's moving in the forward direction and if the boat is in reverse it's then it's the return pass. So it's returning home. Okay so going forward means to go forward, forward pass and to go back home is the return pass. And what we want to do is using the instructions it'll state to do something. So we want to go second chain from the hook. So we're going to collect. See this one? This is the first. This is the second. And I want you to turn it over and get the back hump of the chain. It's important here for Tunisian. And I want you to stick the hook into the back hump of the chain. Some people call that the back loop. I call it the back hump. If you're, if you're not new with me you know that already. So you're going to just go into the back hump of the chain and you're going to collect the yarn, yarn over and pull through and I'm going to demonstrate this several times. You're just going to pull through and do you see how there's an indentation in the hook itself? You need to push this so that that indentation gets to the thickest part of your hook. This is your tension is in this, this diameter. If you leave it in the throat of the hook this stitch is going to be too small. 
So when you get on, get in the habit of pushing it back so that it will go there. And so the boat, your hook, has to continue to travel forward. And so you're going to go to the next back hump and go in and yarn over and pull through and push it beyond the throat to get the thickness of the hook. That's the thickness of your stitch. So then pick up the next one and so now I'll be quiet as I pick up the remaining all the way to the other side. Now I'm coming up close to the other side and I wanna go all the way to the back of, or to the back of this chain. So it's all the way to the end. And I'm gonna get my last one and I'm gonna yarn over, pull through. Let's count how many loops can you see on the hook. Remember we chained 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Remember that the chain count that you start with is going to be the exact number of loops that will be left on the hook on the forward pass. So using the instructions, the instructions are divided into two. You have the forward pass and then you have the return pass. And so you have to go there and back to complete a step except for when you're fastening off or casting off at the end. So let's do the return pass of the boat going home. So let's take the boat home. To take the boat home, usually the, this is here. So in Tunisian, usually when we start a row in regular crochet is that we start, we chain up one and then go in the forward. Okay, so we're taking the boat out to sea. In Tunisian, when we go and start another row, we're actually starting it when the boat is going home, so on the return pass. So to do that is that you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through just one loop. That is considered a chain one to build the next row. So usually the chain one is on this side going forward. In Tunisian it's the other way around. Once you've done the first chain one, the rest of it is all in pairs going all the way home back to the boat uh, dock. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through two and you're gonna continue to do that until you get all the way back and you let the passengers off your boat. I'm trying to teach you in a way that my mom would have taught me um, in order to keep some visualizations to help make sense. So we're, we're turning the boat, we're giving the passengers a warning that they're gonna get off in a couple seconds and you go in twos all the way back to the end. So now we're at the dock, the passengers get off and this is what it will look like. And you will notice there's holes. And so we're gonna talk about that next because it's going to be the forward pass that gets rid of the holes. Whenever you do a return pass, you automatically get these holes that appear. But it's the forward pass of going forward that takes those holes out automatically. And so what we're going to demonstrate is the Tunisian simple stitch. And I want you to visualize all of those upper See how they're verticals? Those are called verticals. <laughs> I know, rocket science, right? Those are vertical strands. You don't use the one right on the edge. You're going to use the very next one. And all you're going to do is you do not chain one because the builder of the row was done on the return over here. So you immediately start in the second vertical that you see. Here's the first one, it's on the edge. You start here and you just slip the hook behind the vertical edge or the vertical strand and you go in and that was like going in the back hump of a chain. So you go in, you yarn over, you pull through and you shift it down your shaft. And what you wanna do is collect these all the way to the other side and it's the one in the very last one is the one you need to be concerned about. That's the one that's gonna scare you. 
Okay, so you go behind the next vertical. And what we wanna do is keep collecting this. This is a Tunisian simple stitch. And you notice as you collect it, it's turning the top section down to fill in the hole. Is that not neat? That's neat, right? So go in the vertical strand, pull through and shift down. Vertical strand. Okay, and I'll be quiet to the remaining and I'll show you how to finish off the last one. Okay, so it's the last one that you need to care about. If you only go into one strand on the very last one, you're going to end up with a hole. So remember how we did a chain one when we started, when we did and we took the boat home in the return pass? What we have to do is that when you do the very last stitch, you have to go into the regular stitch. So there's going to be two strands that make that up. That was that chain one that you did. I'll take that dog hair out. I have a dog. Okay, and once you go in there, you're going to yarn over and pull through. And this will help close down that so you don't end up with a hole. Most people don't know that and then they end up with a hole and they don't know why. It's because of that. So let's take the bow home and do the return pass. So you're gonna yarn over and you're going to chain one. So you're gonna go through only one loop. That's the builder. And then to return all the way home with your passengers, you're gonna yarn over and pull through twos all the way back to the dock. The return pass is usually pretty fast. It's like when you go somewhere and it takes forever to get there but driving home takes no time at all. It's because of the anticipation. So you end up with all those holes once again and it's the forward pass that continues. So I'm gonna demonstrate going there and back and then I'm going to show you how to cast off or how to finish. So to start again, you pick up and do the vertical strands. Notice I did not chain one and noticing that I'm starting on the second vertical strand in from the edge. Now what you're gonna notice as well is that if you look very carefully, do you see how that these strands are not like on top of each other? They're actually offset. So it makes your panels a little bit lopsided. That is normal with Tunisian. So if you get here and you think, oh geez, my project is actually working up on an angle. It's the stitch work, it's not you. And you can block it at the end with a border which we will be doing on the timeless Tunisian blanket as well. So that'll help settle that down. And so let's talk about the edge again. So you're at the edge. When you sneak in, make sure that there's two strands on the edge, pull through, and then you're going to return pass. So to pull through one, that's your chain one to build, and then you pull your twos all the way back through. So let's go all the way back. This curling that you see is natural. That is naturally happens with Tunisian. It, and why is it happening? Because all of the work and the tension is on the front side of this which makes it wanna collapse. Once you get a few rows in, you'll see that it will just, the weight of it will keep it out of your way. And you'll notice that the back looks completely different like to traditional knitting. So let's talk about casting off and we're gonna do it with Tunisian simple stitch style. So we're going to cast off so the cast off is done in the forward pass. A lot of people think this is where you would cast off but then if you did that you end up with these holes. So the cast off process is going to be finishing it and it's going to fill in that final one. So the actual fact the cast off in the final will be over here not here. So let's get there. So because we've done Tunisian simple stitch, we're going to continue to cast off in Tunisian simple stitch. So if you used other stitches in Tunisian, you would use that same kind of stitch and still fasten off. So you're gonna come behind the first vertical. Okay, it's the second one in from the edge. You're gonna yarn over and when you yarn over, give it a little bit of slack because the tension can always be a little tight and you're gonna pull it through that loop as well. And what you're going to do is it's gonna finish off that edge for you. So go to the next vertical, pull through, give it a bit of slack, and then pull through. 
and you see it's actually finishing off beautifully. So you work all the way down your panel work doing the same formation. So in this video today you learned how to cast on. You learned uh, <laughs> a, maybe a thing or two about boats and docks and passengers. But you learned how to do the basics of Tunisian. And when you come to the very last one you treat it the same way. You go into the two strands and you yarn over pull through and through and this is where you finished the project. So then you will cut it and then you'll weave in your ends like you normally would with crochet. And if you're new then you may not know that so you're just gonna pull through and it will lock onto itself but it, you need to use a tapestry needle and so turn it to the back side of your Tunisian and throw that into a tapestry needle. and you're going to drag it through some stitch work staying on the back of your Tunisian. It's very obvious what is the front and what's the back and when you pull it through the first time what you have to pay attention to is not to change the shape by being too tight. So when you pull through just kind of pull on it to make sure that it's um, it's taut but it's not pulling on your project and you just weave it back and forth a total of three times as you go and do this. And you wanna do that with any loose ends that you have. Same process. And therefore you'll have the Tunisian simple stitch. It looks like this. And this is one of the basic stitches that you'll be using. And in the, the timeless Tunisian we're gonna get a little bit more complicated for it. But this is actually a really neat concept and this would be how you would get started with Tunisian if this is of interest for you.